Hello and welcome to a first look at Craft CMS 4.4, which was just released by Pixel and Tonic. If you want to follow along with me in this video, you'll need to spin up a new project with Craft 4.4 or later, upgrade an existing project you have running Craft 4, which I did here, or if you want to try out Andrew Welch's spin up Craft 4.4 repository, you can just launch that in code spaces or download the code or clone it and run that just as it is as a vanilla craft 4.4 project. Of course, you can always just watch and listen as I walk through some of the most important features of 4.4. Now, I won't cover everything in 4.4, but if you want to see a complete list, check out the change log in the craft CMS repository and it'll list everything organized by the impact it has, whether that's on accessibility, on content management, on administration, and you can go through and find the things that matter the most to you. As I mentioned, I've already updated this site. This is TrailQuest, a site that we build in the Real World Craft CMS course here on craftquest.io. I've already updated this to 4.4, uh, you just want to run Composer Update and then Craft Migrate All to get the changes. So as always, please make sure you do this in a local environment using a separate Git branch and you have a full backup of your database. All right, let's jump in and look at a handful of features and changes in Craft 4.4. Craft 4.4 lays some of the groundwork for element changes that are coming in Craft 5, and that is the deprecation and disposal of category elements, tag elements, and global set elements. All of these will be migrated to entry elements in Craft 5. The idea behind this, as far as I understand it, is that content will now all be unified. So if I go into entries here, everything here under entries, so the content, the categories, the tags, it'll all be unified in this user interface here. Instead of having to click out to here to get to categories, it'll all be in here because everything will be entries. In the future, they may rename entries to content or to something else, but the idea is all of your content pieces will live together instead of apart. So you don't have to wait till Craft 5 to adopt this change. You can migrate your elements now using the new entrify command available in Craft 4.4. So let's migrate our categories from this project. I'm just going to click over here to categories. I have some categories as locations. Let's migrate those over and see how it works. So I'm in my project here. Uh, I'm using Andrew Welch's make project setup. This is the uh, Docker setup that he has up on GitHub. That's why I'm prefacing all my commands with make. But uh, I want to do make craft and then help entrify slash categories. And this is going to give me some help documentation on the entryfy command. So here it is, entryfy slash categories. We pass in a category group, it's a string and it's the group handle. So what we do is we say craft entryfy categories. In this case, it's gonna be locations. And then it'll step us through a wizard to uh, tell us what we want it to do as it migrates our categories to entries. There are some additional options here. We can uh, specify the author, and this is the stuff where you can do without any interaction. You can specify these options like entry type, uh, and I'll also say interactive is zero, and uh, it'll make it easier if you need to somehow uh, do that on a server and not have any interaction. So. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go back and remove help and then pass in the handle of the category group. We look back over here in our settings just to confirm under categories, locations is our handle. We'll just copy it just to be sure and then hit enter. So it's going to ask us, have you already created a section to replace the locations category group? Uh, I haven't, that's the default. All right, let's create one. I'm gonna call it locations. The section handle will be locations and enable entry versioning for the section, sure. So now it saved the section 
and the default entry type. And now we're going to enter the username or email of the author that the entries should have. We'll just say admin. And it went through each of those categories and converted them over into entries. Categories converted. Now, some cleanup. Do we want to delete the locations category group? Yeah, I don't need that anymore. And it found one category relating to the a one categories field relating to the locations category group. Do we want to convert that to an entries field? And that is referring to this one right here. If I go to fields and inside of my adventures, there's this location field, which is a categories field type. It's going to convert that to an entries field type. So the relation will continue, but it won't uh, be a categories field type anymore. So we say yes. And there it's converted them. This is the command that we need to run if we wanted to run a single command without any interaction. This is what we want to run on other environments. And that's an important note. These changes are database changes. It's migrating data in your database. These are not going to be captured completely in the project config. Because of that, you have to do this in every environment. It means you're going to do it locally. When you deploy to staging, you're going to have to run this in staging. When you deploy to production, you're going to have to either make it as a one-time command in your deploy script, or you are going to have to log in and run it manually. So keep that in mind. So now if we go back into our control panel here, you can see I have a new section called entries, and they've been all migrated, and they're migrated into a structure section, which makes sense because uh, categories do have hierarchies. And the field that uh, it changed over, if we go into here, is a location field. And it changed it over to a uh, entries field and kept the association for us. So if I go into settings, fields, adventures, there's our location field. And you can see it has been converted over to an entries field. So now I do need to go into my templates and I will need to update my craft.categories element queries and change that over to craft.entries element queries if I want to list out a list of the different locations. So that's another thing that you'll need to make sure you do. So this is going to be a little bit of a disjointed update as you migrate your categories to entries. So keep that in mind. You'll need to have some planning and some practice to get this working smoothly. As part of this Entryfy setup, you are also able to migrate your global sets, which will migrate to singles in craft, and also your tags, which will migrate to just flat entries. It'll be the same process. You'll also need to run that command to migrate those in your other environments. The assets UI also underwent some changes in Craft 4.4. A couple of things you can probably already see here is that subfolders of volumes are now shown here in the listing pane. No matter what view we're in, we're going to see them here in the listing pane. And this feels like a more natural way to look at these in terms of assets and their structure. They used to be over here where you had to unnest and you could see them in a nested list. That feels a little bit better having them over here. It kind of feels a little bit more finder or explorer like, less uh, like a new paradigm. There's also a new path bar at the top that you'll see here where you can have some actions like a new subfolder, or if I click in here, you can see it follows the path. You can also now sort images by height and width. We can scroll over, you can see that these are now sortable columns as well. So if an author needed to find images a specific height or width or wanted to see the smallest ones first, they can very much easily do that now. And finally, for some of the UI updates, moving assets between volumes is now done via the move command instead of drag and drop. And I think this one might have been a little bit controversial. So I have uh, these images here. If I select these, I used to be able to take them and drag them over and drop them in. But now, if you select them, you get a move command. And then you can move them to another asset 
volume. But you can see here, I don't have any other asset volumes, but I can move them into another directory as well. I can move them here. And there we go. So on the topic of assets updates, if we go into settings and then into our asset settings under image transforms, I'm going to create a new transform and you'll see it right here. There's a new option called letterbox. This new transform will allow you to transform images to the 16 by nine letterbox ratio and specify a fill color right here for the top and bottom bars. By default, they are transparent, but if I wanted to uh, make them black, I could do that. And it's going to then transform those to that letterbox width and ratio. The original request for this came out of the idea of sometimes we just want them all to be the same size and not be cropped in, let's say like product images and where fit and stretch definitely don't work. Like, let me just keep it as the same, but size it down so I can have the letterbox. So there you go. You still have image positioning. You still have width and height and upscaling and all of the usual settings, but this time you have fill color along with the letterbox transform option. Before 4.4, the conditionally shown fields were indicated with a dashed border. So this little diamond will appear next to anything that is conditional. So if I made this no longer conditional, if I just took this condition out and clicked apply, you can see that is now gone. So it's just a small change, but it will impact how you work with the conditional fields in your field layout for your entry types. Craft 4.4 also introduces some consistency among the different ways of dumping data. So Craft's dump, DD, and the twig dump function now all use Symfony's var dumper. And this unifies them all to have the same formatted output. Additionally, the twig dump function no longer requires dev mode to work. Also, we have in our eDebug toolbar a new panel called dumps. And this is where we can see variables that were dumped via our templates. So let's take a look at how that works. In my template here, this is just the homepage template. If I use the dump tag, which is a new dump tag, and I go ahead and pass in testimonials and go back into my project here, you can see that now says dumps one, and I can now see the different items in this element collection and I can look through them. This is nice because it doesn't interrupt the rendering of the page. Instead, it just puts it into that panel. Now, if I did DD for testimonials, dump and die, of course that will interrupt the rendering of the page, but look, it also now has a nice output and everything is consistent. Similarly, if I did the dump function in twig, you can see that is dropped into here as well. So a nice small change, but I think it will make a little bit of a nicer development experience. If you need to dump out some data, you can just look it right in the dump pane of your Yi debug toolbar. If you've ever had the admin account for a project locked or any account for that matter, you'll be happy to see this change. There is now a users unlock command that allows someone with privileged access. Basically you have access to the command line of the server to manually unlock the user by passing in the email address of the to be unlocked user. So we'll just run help on that so we can see, and you see it unlocks the user's account and we pass in user a string and it's going to be the ID, username, or email address of that user account. Also some options here, some pretty basic ones. So that is how you will unlock a user via the command line. 
Again, a small change, but it will help you in those instances where you need to unlock account. Maybe you take over a project, you need to unlock the account and get access to the project. This is how you would do it going forward. And finally, I want to talk about private plugin support. I don't have a demo to show you for this one, but just so you know, Craft 4.4 and even going uh, back into Craft 3.8, which is the latest version of Craft 3, now support private plugins. And these are normal plugins, except that they don't uh, have to deal with the license validation. And you can use the underscore in the handle of the plugin to indicate it as a private plugin, which means there will never be a collision with a plugin handle from the plugin store. So again, a small change for uh, developers, but something that will be uh, nicely received for those people that are trying to write their own plugins and are worried about collisions with uh, both license validation and the naming on the plugin store. So you can uh, check that out in Craft 3.8 if you're still running a Craft 3 site, or of course in Craft 4.4. I hope you enjoyed this first look at Craft 4.4. And if you're interested in learning more about Craft CMS, or if you've been uh, a watcher of the videos and the live streams, but have not yet committed to becoming a premium member, I want you to know that CraftQuest is powered by the community and by premium members. Those memberships allow me to create new videos, to have guests on, and to create more material on a weekly basis. So please, if you haven't yet, please sign up for a premium membership to CraftQuest. And I think that it's so good, there's almost a thousand videos in the catalog that I'm offering a free three-day trial to everything in the catalog. Sign up, get a free three-day trial, and then it'll automatically convert over to a full premium membership, and you'll be able to have everything that you need going forward on Craft CMS and modern web development. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you on the next video.